everybody welcome back to my channel and today i want to talk to you about the holy spirit yes the holy spirit i feel like the holy spirit is the most misunderstood of the trinity um and i say that because i misunderstood the holy spirit for a long time and personally just to give you some of the things i thought about the holy spirit from the past was that it was like this spooky ghost i'm i'm being serious it was spooky it was a ghost that would you know randomly jump on people like <laughs> jump on you in church um <laughs> And it will make you run, dance, shout, like speak in these unknown languages and, you know, do all this stuff and then pass out. I thought that because and I thought the passing out was the Holy Ghost jumping off of you. So <laughs> I know that might sound crazy to some, but to others, that is what we grew up learning about the Holy Spirit. Even now, it's it's kind of seen as some, some sort of force or, you know, some sort of energy that helps, you know, the universe, you know, coming together. No, the Holy Spirit is a person. He's unique. And I want to talk about exactly who he is today. So the first thing about the Holy Spirit or the not even the first mention, but where I want to start is in John chapter 14 and 15 through 17. It says, Jesus says, if you love me, obey my commandments and I will ask the father and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you will know him because he lives in you now and will later be within you. So... What Jesus was promising was God's Holy Spirit. And before this, like I said, the Holy Spirit had appeared on the scene even before the New Testament, but he was seen. So what I was trying to say is that in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit didn't dwell inside of every believer. But now after the New Covenant, he does dwell inside of every believer our hearts when we repent of our sins we're baptized in the name of jesus christ and confess all these things after that is when the holy spirit comes to live inside of us so in the beginning like the old testament you see the holy spirit there you know in the midst of creation and you see him um like the old testament says how the spirit of god will come upon people from time to time empowering them um for god's service prophesying um the prophets even predicted um, that after salvation, God will pour out his spirit. God will pour out his spirit upon all men. Um, so yeah, the first thing I guess that I want to point out is that the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. Um, like I said before, um, he was there in the beginning. He is God. He, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are God. They're co-equal, co-eternal. You even see in Genesis where it talks about him hovering over the face of the deep, like helping in creation. So Father, Son, Holy Spirit are one. They are God. Um, but the Holy Spirit is unique. Um, he has a unique role. Um, so just to give you examples of how he has a unique role we can go ahead and look at first corinthians chapter 2 10 through 12 and i've already kind of got these marked out and i'm reading from the nlt version um so you can just follow along with me just to show you that the holy spirit is not some force he is actually a personal being it's a he not an it um so yeah first corinthians 2 10 through 12 says for the Spirit searches out everything and shows us God's deep secrets. No one can know a person's thoughts except that person's own spirit. And we have received God's spirit, not the world's spirit, so we can know the wonderful things God has freely given us. So if you would go over to 1 Thessalonians 5 and 19, it says, Do not stifle the Holy Spirit. Do not scoff at his prophecies, but test everything that is said. Then if you go over to 1 Corinthians 12 and 11, he makes decisions. You will see that there are gifts. God has the body of Christ there. In the body of Christ, there are many gifts. The Holy Spirit is the one who decides who should get what gift. Then if you go over to Ephesians 4 and 30, you'll see that he will grieve. So once the Holy Spirit comes and lives with you, he is living like living inside of you 
So it says, Ephesians 4 and 30, do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Remember, he has identified you as his own, guaranteeing that you will be saved on the day of redemption. So the Holy Spirit can grieve. The Holy Spirit makes decisions. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit is God. So think about that. The Holy Spirit lives inside of you, meaning he's always with you. And the thing is, I'm going to go ahead and go to the functions of the Holy Spirit because I think that'll help us um, give us a better picture again who the Holy Spirit is. So the Holy Spirit is our advocate. He is our intercessor. John 15 and 26 says, but I will send you the advocate, the spirit of truth. He will come to you from the father and testify about me. So the spirit continues Jesus's work by defending, advising, and protecting us as believers. He leads us into all truth. He is our comforter. He also convicts us. Yes, that's right. He convicts us. We're no longer condemned because we're no longer of the world. We are in um, the body of Christ. So we are convicted. He guides us into all truth. Um, he gives us power. So the Holy Spirit gives us power, you guys. We are literally not supposed to be walking out here powerless. But because we don't heed the Spirit, that's really just what we come off as powerless. Or not even come off as, that's what we are. We're powerless. Um, but with the Holy Spirit, we like literally, if you look at, you know, in the beginning of Acts, when they literally, oh, they obey God and they get, the, they are filled with the Holy Spirit. These people now are empowered to go out into the world and spread Jesus' name, who he is. And literally uh, with the persecution that was going on it was literally going to take another power we just to think we could do that ourselves we're too weak like i sit here and think about that we're as just by ourselves we wouldn't be able to do that um gosh that you know it takes power the power to um just speak boldly in the midst of adversity i know a lot of times and this is what i i'm asking god deliver me deliver me from people sometimes i get a little bit timid even though i stand where i am i get a little bit timid when i get around a group of people who none of them believe in god if when it comes to just me standing up i get a little bit timid i'm going to be honest but the Holy Spirit emboldens me, empowers me to be able to testify about who Jesus is. I cannot be quiet because that is the power of the Spirit living within me. And if I do miss an opportunity, I go back, I immediately um, I ask for forgiveness. I'm like, God, forgive me. I didn't, you know, I was too afraid to speak your name, speak of Jesus. I'm sorry, I forgive me. And then I go on to the next situation. God will continue to bring about situations and people in order for me to testify about who Jesus is. And it's not my, it's not my responsibility to make these people change. It's God who is going to make the thing grow. I plant the seed, I water it, God makes it grow. So um, yeah, the Holy Spirit will empower you. The Holy Spirit does so much that we miss. Um, we should be out here casting out demons. We should be out here, you know, pro prophesying. We should have, we should see the gifts in the body, but we rarely do because people are not heeding the Spirit. There is something inside well the holy spirit is inside of you now but he is trying to unlock get you to unwrap a gift that you might have like you don't see how like we don't really see the full operation of the gifts in the church because people aren't heeding the spirit we're not operating in that power that he gives us so yeah um so um, this, like I said, the spirit is not spooky. A lot of times we feel like we got to like conjure up the spirit and we got to like, Ooh, like meditate and like, you know, I don't know. Like the Holy Spirit lives inside of us. If you don't heed the Holy Spirit, you can become powerless. Like he lives there. Like, I think I used this example one time. Like, <laughs> like I said, if you have a bottle of wine in your house, you have that bottle of wine in your house. But if you're not drinking that bottle of wine, you won't be drunk with that wine. Now, the Holy Spirit is the same way. 
I know this is a weird analogy, but the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. You cannot heed what the Holy Spirit tells you and how he guides you. and how He can guide you somewhere and you can totally decide to go the other way, which is basically putting out his fire. It's basically putting out the power that he brings. We are supposed to walk in power. And there's a verse, let me go, it's in Acts chapter 1. And it says, look y'all, just this is kind of like a sidebar do not get um a hardback bible this thing is literally i haven't had it um that long maybe two years and it's falling apart i'm gonna read oh my gosh i'm gonna read okay so x chapter one um this is jesus right before he left he says um to his disciples um once he was which is talking about jesus once he was eating with them talking about the disciples he commanded them do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift he promised. As I told you before, John baptized with water, but in a few days you will baptize with the Holy Spirit. And then it, as it goes down, it says, um, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witness telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria and the ends of the earth. So the Holy Spirit literally gives us power because the holy spirit if you're a believer that is the power that lives inside of you and that is the most powerful gift you could ever receive power and authority over the enemy like go ahead and thank god right now <laughs> thank you god thank you god for your holy spirit like i realized before i received the holy spirit i could do things but i have a new level of i have a new power because the spirit of god lives inside of me he is everywhere i go i talk to the holy spirit which is a god um like i said he's not some force i don't have to wait for him to jump on me like my pastor says a lot of people go into church or the building called church and they're in worship and they literally wait on some spooky like ghost to jump on them make them worship god make them you know shout make them thank him make him praise him but what god has shown me is that and what my pastor says too you when you think about the goodness when you think about how god the just the greatness and the mercifulness and the just graciousness everything about god it will make you you will praise god you will praise god and like i said the holy spirit is there to guide you he is there to testify about what jesus did when you just think about what jesus did that makes me want to be like you know thank you god like give him praise so you don't have to wait on the holy spirit to do a lot of things um so yeah the holy spirit gives you power not just the ability to fall out and do all these things but he does like he gives us the power to prophesy he gives us these different gifts like i said prophecy um speaking in own languages teaching preaching being an apostle all these things the spirit sees what he wants to give as a gift and he does that the spirit is a personal being and i think that's the thing i want you to carry away today the holy spirit is god but he's a personal being part of the trinity um Let's see, one more thing I want to talk about. Nowadays, I feel like, you know how I've talked about this before. I want to teach, you know, what the Bible says about the Holy Spirit. But there, if you really read about the Holy Spirit and who he is, you will see and understand that there are some false versions of the Holy Spirit. Um, Like I said, people think of it as a force. Like, they've got to really, like, be meditating. To, you know, like... The Holy Spirit convicts you. You don't have to sit there for days, sitting there trying to, you know, do all this stuff to figure out that the Holy Spirit is saying, do this. You, it's like that little voice that says, don't do this or don't do that. I know I'm not supposed to do this or things you kind of question about, like, maybe I should be doing, you know, maybe I can do that. But no, like, you know, you know, the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. You don't have to channel him. You <laughs> All you do is listen to what he tells you to do. And I can't remember the exact scripture, um, but it talks about, you know, how we're free. We're not no longer bound by the law uh, because of this new covenant. And because the Holy Spirit, if you're really following, being led by the Holy Spirit, you don't have to worry about the law because the Holy Spirit 
will never lead you into a place that you're not supposed to be. But you can choose. Like I said, you can choose something different. Um, but thank God we're not no longer bound by the law. Um, so yeah, the Holy Spirit <laughs> is not spooky. He's not a ghost. He's not some force. He's a he. He has feelings. He lives inside of you as a believer who is born again. And he loves you. He wants to know you. He wants to spend time with you. He wants you to listen to him. Listen to him. So yeah, thank you guys for rocking with me on this video. Um, I just love God, y'all. I just, like literally, I love God. And I know it's the Holy Spirit that is within me that testifies because I can't help but talk about God. Like literally sometimes I'm like, why am I talking about God so much? <laughs> Why can I not stop talking about God? Because God's Holy Spirit lives inside of me. And I try my best not to grieve him. I try my best to listen to what he's saying. I try my best to be obedient. I'm not perfect. None of us are perfect. But I try my best. And when I tell you the Holy Spirit has been a comforter, he has been um, like just, just everything that God, that Jesus promised he would be. Like literally... When you do what the Holy Spirit tells you to do, things are easier. And even staying pure, not just physically, but like pure in spirit, pure physically, mentally, all these things, staying pure, just doing what the Holy Spirit tells me to do allows me to do that and it makes it so much easier. Like sometimes I can get to a situation and I can think, don't do that, that or that, that's the Holy Spirit, you know, guiding me, don't do that, nudging me, don't do that. And... I won't do it and it makes life so much easier i i just thank god for the holy spirit because he keeps me pure um and it's a pleasure like literally a pleasure to follow um sometimes you know <laughs> i can't like okay come on now holy spirit what 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 <laughs> help help you girl out um but yeah i i'm just thankful for the holy spirit some random 800 number cut me off last time I guess it was saying stop the video because now you're babbling but <laughs> thank you guys for watching thank you for sitting here listening to me talk about the Holy Spirit you guys Holy Spirit is awesome Holy Spirit personal being um, don't ever think that he's some kind of spooky force or ghost I've said this a million times but he is a spirit of God that lives inside of you thank you all for watching have a good day bye